arson, a new murder. Police have found no clue as yet to the identity of the bat. But city detective Anderson said today it is useless combing the underworld for him. The bat is too intelligent. We will have to look higher. Oh. Lizzie, what did you really see last night? Right over there. I was standing at the top of the staircase. The lights went out. And when I looked down here, I saw an eye. A gleaming eye. And it winked. That was your chance, Lizzie. A ghost that wanted to flirt with you. A ghost nothing. How do we know it wasn't the bat? Because the bat wouldn't come within a thousand miles of you. You'd scare him to death. Oh, oh, oh. Go get some candles. Oh. Oh. Give me Union City Police Headquarters, please. Yes. Uh, hello. I'd like to speak to City Detective Anderson, please. And now, the premiere performance of the Dow Hour of Great Mysteries, produced by Robert Sodic Associates. The Bat, by Mary Roberts Reinhardt and Avery Hopwood. Starring Helen Hayes, Jason Robards, Jr., and Joseph N. Welch as your host. be calm when a window rattles or a floor creaks and the wind is screaming around the house, especially if you're going to see a mystery story. Mary Roberts Reinhardt wrote some of the American classics in this field and we are going to begin this series of great mysteries with her play, The Bat. As you will see, The Bat is a very busy fellow, talented too. Theft, arson, murder, all in a night's work. He is, in short, one of the master criminals of the 1920s. Those were the days, fond, foolish days, when people loved to be scared by a hidden hand, a sudden scream, and a creaking door. The first time the bat was produced, the playwrights withheld the last three pages of the script so that none of the actors knew which one of them would turn out to be the bat. Just before the play opened, the actors were given the last three pages. And I am told that the actor, or actress, who turned out to be the bat was furious. Who wants to be a villain? Will the identity of the bat fool you? Well, let's see. In our wisdom, let's not begin at midnight when things are at their thickest. But on the morning of the same day as the coffin of banker Courtley Fleming is about to be lowered into its grave. Not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty. O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. Amen. I'll be going out to the house. You can't. I've rented it for that Miss Van Gorder. You're a very callous young man. Your uncle's been dead for less than a week. He wouldn't let it stand idle with that banker's mind of his. <coughs> the bank. I've just bidden it open up. Yes? Gone. The securities are gone. I opened the vaults. What and about Jack Bailey? The cashier? I tried to call him. Vanished. No one's seen him since yesterday. Miss Neely, 
can't we go back to the city and come back next summer? Because I know what's going to happen to us. We're all going to be murdered in our beds. You were born on a brick pavement, Lizzie. Anything in the country would frighten you, even the crickets. Ah! Yes, Billy? New gardener come. New gardener at this hour? I'll see him in the kitchen. Billy, how long have you worked here for Mr. Fleming? Thirteen years, Missy. And this is the first time there have ever been disturbances in this house? Us two day only. Find window open, nobody there. Door slam, nobody there. Let's go to the city. <gasps> Lizzie, will you lock the library windows? <coughs> and Billy, you see that all the outer doors on this floor are locked. And bring me the keys. I'll wait up for my niece. <coughs> Lizzie! Oh, see here, Lizzie. I may as well tell you, stop all this foolish screaming. I'm having a detective sent down tonight from police headquarters in the city. A detective? Yes. The one in the paper is Mr. Anderson. Miss Neely, you're keeping something from me. You know more than I do. I devoutly hope so. I'm not certain I'll need him, but detective work fascinates me. It'll be interesting to see how a good one goes about it. Ah! <clears throat> now I asked you to bolt those windows. Yes, madam. Brooks is my name. You're the man my niece engaged in the city this afternoon? Yes, madam. Miss Neely, Miss Neely, Miss Neely. All on the grounds down by the gate, somebody yelled. What did they yell? Just a yell, a terrible yell. Did you see anyone as you came up the driveway? No. Who's he? You take a liver pill and go to bed. I couldn't verify your references. The Brays are in Canada. I'm sure if Mrs. Bray were here. Were you? Are you a professional gardener? Yes. Do you know anything about hardy perennials? Oh, yes. They're the ones that uh, keep their leaves in the winter. Come over here. Had any experience with rubiola? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Alopecia? Uh, the dry weather is hard on it. How would you treat urticaria? I'd thin it. You'd scratch it, you mean. Young man, urticaria is hides. Rubiola is measles and alopecia is baldness. Now, why did you tell me that you were a professional gardener? And what are you doing here this hour of the night? I should never have tried it. I knew you'd find me out. I, I don't know anything about gardening. The truth is that I was desperate. I, I had to have work. That's all? It's enough when you're broke. <laughs> oh. Billy, have you had anything to eat lately? Not since this morning. Billy, give this man something to eat and then show him where he's to sleep. You keep this with you. The local light company crawls under the bed whenever there's a thunderstorm. Good night. Good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, oh Miss Neely. Have you lost your senses taking a stranger into the house? A good-looking man comes in the door and your brains fly out the window. How do you know he isn't the bat? That will be Dale. I'll let her in. When the detective comes, we'll put him in the blue room. Go see that it's ready. A detective tiptoeing around with his eyes to all the keyholes. Body won't be safe in the tub. Dale, is that you? Yes, I Cornelia. Who's with you? Dr. Wells offered to drive me home from the club. And how are we this evening, Miss Van Gogh? Very well, thank you, Doctor. Will you forgive me? I may as well tell you. Last night and the night before, attempts were made to get into this house. I didn't know how awful. I don't want to alarm you with it. I'm hoping this fresh air will pick you up. How was the country club tonight, Doctor? Gloomy. You know the Union Bank closed today. I heard. Do you know the story? It's the usual story. Cashier, young chap named Bailey, looted the place of over a million. How do you know he did it? Couldn't somebody else? The only other person who had access to those securities was Courtley Fleming. Unfortunately, he's dead. Oh. Uh, Dale, did you know this uh, Bailey? <laughs> yes, 
slightly. Before he died, could Courtley Fleming have robbed his own bank? Well, if he did, I can testify that he didn't have the money with him in Colorado. I was there. I persuaded him to take his first vacation in years. And his heart acted up. And I found myself with the unpleasant duty of bringing home the body of my best friend. No, he had his faults, but not that. What is this? Childish. A paper around a stone. <laughs> Wait a minute, I... The bolt is on the top there. This... This is fair warning. Leave the house before anything happens to you. Well, who do you think wrote it? A fool, that's who. If anything were calculated to make me stay here, this sort of thing would do it. Don't, don't let anybody in. <clears throat> Keep front door, please. Bell ring. Before you admit the visitor, get his name. And, uh, Billy, if it's Mr. Anderson, you take him into the library. Anderson? It's a detective from police head wow. headquarters. A detective? Uh, not necessary to tell the doctor. I think he's a sort of perambulating bedside gossip. He got away in the shrubbery. Would you bolt that door again, please, doctor? Oh, of course. Miss Van Gorda, may I speak frankly? Generally speaking, I detest frankness. I think you ought to leave the house. Have you any enemies? Don't insult me. Of course I have. Enemies are an indication of character. Why don't you stay the night at my house in the village? I can make you comfortable there. Or if you won't come, let me stay here. No, thank you, doctor. I don't frighten easily. You come. I didn't get far, did I? <laughs> Who's come? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the new gardener, perhaps. <laughs> Will you take a parting word of advice? The thing to do with a midnight prowler is leave him alone. Lock your bedroom doors and don't let anything bring you out till morning. Oh. Good night, then. Good night, Doctor. B Billy will let you out. Good night, Doctor. Trace me here? Anthony had him come. People have been trying to break in here at night. That proves it. I know what happened. What? Courtley Fleming took that money, hid it here, and somebody knows he did. Why didn't you go to the police and tell them that? Do you think they'd have believed me? Do you believe me? Dale, I didn't take that money. Well, of course you didn't. Here, Mr. Anderson. Uh, it was smashed just a few minutes ago. Mm. Good, clean fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Someone wants to get you out of here, all right. Uh, do you mind if I move this? We ought to have some kind of barricade. Anyone could reach his hand through and open the latch. You women are here alone? I have this. I don't know much about it. But I should be able to hit something. Uh, would you mind putting that away? I like to get in the papers as much as anybody, but not on that page. I've been reading your statement tonight about the bat. You don't think he's trying to get in here? Someone is, for some reason. Any liquor stored in the house? Yes. What? Eleven bottles of homemade elderberry wine. You're safe. Anyway, you can always tell when the bat has anything to do with the crime. He always signs his name to it. His name? It's a figure of speech. The newspapers started calling him the bat because he always works at night and very fast. In the last six months, he's taken up the name himself. <laughs> Pure bravado. Sometimes he just draws the outline of a bat to leave his signature. Once, he got a hold of a real bat and nailed it to the wall. Oh, there they go again. I should tell you one thing more. 
this house belonged to the late Courtley Fleming. Oh, the Union Bank. Yes, could there possibly be any connection between these disturbances and that bank theft today? I'll tell you how headquarters figures it. In the first place, the cashier is missing. In the second place, if Courtley Fleming robbed his own bank and got as far as Colorado with the money, he'd have had it on him. In the third place, suppose he had hidden the money around this house. Why would he rent the house to you? He didn't. I rented it from his nephew. Now, I've read a great deal about crime detectives. I'm sure you have. Oh. There are a lot of amateur detectives crawling around the country these days trying to tell the police how to do their jobs. If you go to bed and get a good night's sleep, I'll stay up and keep an eye on things. Very well. Would you like some coffee to keep you awake? No, thank you. Don't need it. Good night. Did you ask Dick Fleming to come tonight? Yes, he was at the club. What do you want me to find out from him? Now listen, one time at the bank, quite by accident, I heard the old man say there was a blocked off room somewhere in the house. I say that's where the money is. Would Dick Fleming know about the room? He might. <sighs> if only I had a blueprint of this place. I've only got one night to work in. Yes. Oh. Spooky place in the dark, isn't it? Yes. Uh, was it you I just heard? I guess so. I, I'm I'm Miss Van Gorder's niece, Dale Ogden. You're not going to stay up all night, are you? I may. Why? Oh, nothing. I... Uh... Yes? Yes, this is Anderson. A rotten connection. Go ahead. You're sure of that, are you? I see. Do you know the cashier at the Union Bank? No. No? no. That was headquarters. They've just searched Bailey's rooms and they found some letters there from you. Very well. We're engaged. Why didn't you tell me that before? It's been a secret. I haven't even told my aunt yet. How can the police be so stupid as to accuse Jack Bailey? Do you think he'd wreck his future like that? Sorry to trouble you. You mind if I smoke? Uh, no, no. I've come into the library. What's all the mystery? Why did you want me Mr. to... Uh... Fleming. Mr. Fleming, I'm going to say something brutal. But I have to. You see, I am engaged to Jack Bailey. Yes. Mm. He hasn't run away. He's in this house. He's here because he, he knows he didn't take the money. And the only person who could have taken it is your uncle. It's not a nice thing to say about a dead man. It's true. And you think I know where it is? There's a hidden room. There's a blocked off room in this house. <laughs> oh, boy, this is good. Hey, let me get it straight now. There's a hidden room and the money's in it, is that? Do you know where there are any blueprints to the house? Blueprints? Why, uh, 
Yes, there may be some. Have you looked in that telephone table in the hall? No. Well, here, why don't you go see? Oh, thank you. Let me see it? Well, no, I don't know. Give me three good reasons why I should. If you won't give it to me, give it to the detective and let him search. Detective? Here? What for? Well, people have been trying to break in what here. What people? I, I don't know. Imagine that. must be here. Oh. What are you doing? Oh. Miss Ogden, suppose I needed money badly. It's happened before, you know. Suppose I choose to believe that my dear departed uncle left me some cash right here in this house. Now, why would I give it away? If you go out of this room with that paper, I will scream for help. And the detective will come running, and I'll tell him that Jack Bailey is right here where he wants him. Uh-uh. You won't do that. Oh, Mr. Fleming. Mr. Fleming, please. Mr. Fleming. Now give it to me. Give it. Oh! oh. dead. Who is he? Richard Fleming. Somebody shot him. What do you mean by somebody? Somebody up there. It looked like a bat. I told you man went up that staircase. I've been all over the house. There was nobody. But we have something odd here, Miss Van Gorder. Courtley Fleming's nephew was shot in this house on the very day the bank fails, and the only person with him is your niece. Well? Who was engaged to the missing cashier. Is this true, Dale? Yes, but I didn't do it. I didn't. No one said you did. Uh, there's someone else in this house, Mr. Anderson. I don't think so, but if it will make you any happier, you'll go over the... Wait a minute. Who's this? The gardener. I've seen you somewhere. Not in the portrait gallery at headquarters, are you? Not yet. Well, we don't need any gardening done at the moment. I have work to do. You two, go over the place thoroughly. If I can just take this revolver. No, I will take care of the revolver. Thank you. This yours? It's mine. One shot has been fired. I fired it myself this afternoon. You're a quick thinker. What was Fleming doing here? I, I don't know. Well, I'll ask the question another way. How did he get into the house? I threw through the front door. He had a key. He used to live here. What were you doing with this revolver? I heard him outside. I was frightened. When he came in, what did he say to you? Nothing. He, he just came in and, and... And was shot from above? Is that your story? Yes. Are these questions necessary? Surely you don't think for a moment that Miss Ogden killed that man. I think she knows more than she's telling us. <sighs> you stay here. Dale, are you doing something foolish because you're engaged to that cashier? Auntie, don't ask me that. That, that part of it's true. There was a shot and he just... Fell over. Yes? Oh. I'm Dr. Well. Uh, doctor. I... Good. I'll need your help. Why? Anderson. City police. Will you come in here? Of course, but what's happened? Who? Richard Fleming, Doctor. Dick Fleming? Shot and killed from the staircase. Shot and killed, anyhow. From the staircase? What was Dick doing here at this hour? Tonight? I think Miss Ogden can tell us. She was here when it happened.
He, he died instantly, I suppose. Didn't have time to say anything. No. Mr. Anderson, this proves that my fears were correct. Will you use your influence to see that these two ladies are taken to some safer spot for the night? Two? What about me? Oh, I wish the lights would go out and just stay out forever. Lizzie, go make some coffee. Miss Ogden, what papers did you and Richard Fleming burn here tonight? Papers? Papers. The ashes are still in the fireplace. My niece has said he didn't even go into the living room. I hold in my hand proof that he was in the living room for some time. His cigarette with his monogram on it. Furthermore, there are edges of blueprint in that fireplace. What were you and Dick Fleming doing with a blueprint? All right, I will tell you what happened. I sent for Richard Fleming, and when he came, I asked him where there were any blueprints to the house. Why did you want blueprints? Because I believed that old Mr. Fleming took the money from the Union Bank himself and hid it here. How did you get that idea? I... I won't tell you. Well, what did blueprints have to do with it? I'd heard that there was a hidden room built into this house. And did you locate that room? No. Well, why did you burn the blueprints? He burned them. I don't know why. Mr. Anderson, with your permission, I would like to move the body. Yes, and I'll want a report, Doctor, on the direction of the wound. Find nobody. Gardner disappeared. No find him now. Uh, Billy, the doctor will need your assistance. I suggest the library, Doctor. The truth now, Miss Ogden? Did he burn all the blueprints? Yes, all of it. All right, then. That means he must have located the room first. It was upstairs, wasn't it? He knew it was upstairs. So did you. He started to go toward that staircase. He's going to take the money and go away with Dale, it. Dale, be careful what you say. He changed the minute he heard about it. He was going to you be... You wanted to find the, the money to save Bailey, but in order to do it, you had to take young Fleming into your confidence. He double-crossed you. Rather than let him get away with it, didn't, didn't you kill, kill him? Then why didn't you call for help? You knew I was here. I, 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 I couldn't. Uh, this I, girl I, is nearly hysterical. Mr. Anderson, I forbid you to question her any further. I shall want time and perhaps legal advice before I will permit her not to find that room for you. If I could locate that hidden room for you, would that establish Jack Bailey's innocence? If the money were there, yes. Dale, you must let me handle this. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you're skipping a step. If that shot was fired from above, then Dale had nothing to do with it. Mm, we'll find out. Doctor! Have you examined the wound? Straight to the heart. Any powder marks? No. He was apparently shot from some little distance, and I should say from above. You see, Mr. Anderson? You. Get me that gardener. Now, don't tell me he's disappeared. Go find him. I wonder if this has any meaning. I picked it up on my way to the house just now. Man's watch. Partially crushed into the ground. And you see it stopped running. Yes, at 10.30. It looked like there'd been a struggle. The gravel was all torn up. And... It was 10.30 when Lizzie heard someone cry out on the ground. I don't suppose it has any bearing on the case, but it's just... Is that Billy? He ran into the kitchen. Is that all you're going to say? We can't help you. Doctor, see what you can do with him. He's paralyzed with fright.
gone wrong. Well, Mr. Rubiola, alopecia, urticaria, otherwise Bailey. If that fool of a detective were as smart as he thinks he is, he'd have had you an hour ago. Now, Dale, is there a piece of blueprint that wasn't burned? Yes. Where is it? I don't know. The cat had he had it in his hand when he started up the stairs. It's not there now. How do you know? Well, after Dr. Wells went into the kitchen, I... I, I left myself. I see. Well, it's perfectly clear, isn't it? Dr. Wells has the blueprint. Now, all we have to do is keep him from going up those stairs. Well, why, Dr. Wells? My dear girl, who has been standing guard over the body ever since he came in here? I think that Billy's crazy. Someday I want to meet the real estate man who told me I'd sleep in this house as I never slept before. I have. I've slept with my clothes on every single night. Uh, 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 Brooke, would you get me some wood for the fire? Yes, madam. <clears throat> You don't suppose your servants are deliberately seeing spooks in order to frighten you out of the house? I do not. Oh, Doctor? Doctor Will? Yes? Doctor, uh, you wouldn't have some sleeping powders with you. Uh, I'm afraid we're all going to need them tonight. In my bed. I don't usually recommend these drugs, and I'd much rather you simply left the house, but I'll get some. You called him off the staircase and sent him away deliberately. Why? Ever try to knit when you wanted to think? I don't need knitting to think straight, thank you. I wonder. <laughs> you have so much evidence you don't know what to do with. Ever hear the story about the man who took the clock apart, and when he put it together again, he had enough left over to make another clock? <laughs> All right. You're getting at something. What? Why, you, you have been annoying Dale with your questions. I, too, have not been idle. Now, it's perfectly evident to me that one intelligence has been at work behind the things that have happened in this house. Who? I'll ask you that. Someone who, knowing Courtly Fleming well, also knew of the hidden room. Someone who, finding me in occupation of the house, tried to get rid of me, first by frightening me and then by urging me to go. Someone who very possibly entered this house shortly before the murder tonight and slipped up that staircase. The doctor? <laughs> Earlier this evening, I asked Dr. Wells to bolt that terrace door. He pretended to, but I don't think he did it. He meant to return later himself. And there's another thing I'll tell you. There is a piece of blueprint. Oh. What? Yes, Dale lied to you. You're not really very successful with women, Mr. Anderson. I'll give you some pointers later. Oh, over here, Lizzie. You don't honestly think you need a detective, do you? I am a humble follower in your footsteps. Richard Fleming had the blueprint when he started up the stairs. It's not in his hands now. <laughs> the doctor's taken very good care of him. I see. I think I shall have to have a few words with our busy friend. <laughs> the that. window, the window! She's going Why to don't you put you that hand. street down on the bed? Why don't you find out if someone's out there? Lizzie, what's the matter? I'm going to put these women to bed. If you'll give me... Thanks. One part I will do. Miss Van Gorder, you can still stay the night at my house. You know discretion is the better part of valor. I have been discreet for 60 years, and sometimes I think it was a mistake. Come. Oh. 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 I'll trouble you for that blueprint, Doctor. What blueprint? The one you just failed to throw in the fireplace. Now, this situation is between you and me, Dr. Wells. It has nothing to do with that poor fool of a cashier. He didn't take the money, and you know it. It's hidden in this house, and you know that, too. Were you at the top of the staircase when Dick Fleming was shot? I was not. I haven't been upstairs in this house in three months. Upstairs? So that's where the hidden room is. I didn't say that. Pick it up. Put it on the table. Now stand back. 
Behind the fireplace, huh? Which fireplace? In what room? I haven't the faintest idea. All right. I'll find out. Where's Anderson? This is a police matter. I'll see if I can find him. No, no. Help me with this. He'll be back in a minute. He was here a moment ago. He has no papers, nothing. Oh, there they go again, again. Here's the candle, please. Oh, and there are some others in the library. Will you get them, Brooke? This door's locked. Go around through the hallway. What's happening? We're locked in this room. Bring your camera. Mom, is every man in this house a hopeless and competent? How could we be locked in? Gentlemen, search all the rooms. Or must I do it myself? Billy, you take the second floor. I'll go all the way up. Go to your rooms. I'll account for everything down here. Maybe will you stop sticking to me like a mustard plaster? Windows open. The 
40 foot drop to the ground. He couldn't have. What? It's hot. And, it, and there's more of it. It's it down on the floor. Where does it lead? Right. To the fireplace. Why the fireplace? That's what we're going to find out. Jack. Jack. Get in. Lock this door. What are you doing running around loose by yourself? Where is everybody? They're searching the house. There's no sign of anybody. Oh, it's Lizzie's head. There ought to be something you pull or push or... But, oh! Merciful heaven. Jack, be careful! Nobody home. We've got the money. It's empty. The money's gone. Well, that settles me. Didn't I, I, I... Is Dale in there? Dale! Here, open it! Dale! Oh. Oh. Ah. 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 Quick matches! Doctor, why did you put out that candle? I didn't. You did, I saw Doctor! The She's here! Oh. Hurry, quick! Oh, Miss Dealey! I can't stand it! My teeth are chattering! Take them out and put them in your pocket. Oh. You're lucky. She's only Here. fainted. She'll be all right in a minute. I'll get something from downstairs. You took my revolver from me downstairs, Doctor. I'd like to have it back now. That's right. Come in when everything's over. Here, she's coming around. Mr. Anderson, we found her locked in that room. Dale? Can you tell us? I hit him there. And then he came in. You know who that man was? Do you? No, I don't. I do. It was the bat. Oh, stop harping on the bat! No, Miss Van Gorder, we'll ask the doctor who took the money out of the safe. We'll ask the doctor who attacked me downstairs, knocked me senseless and locked me in the library. The next time you put handcuffs on a man, doctor, be sure you take the key out of his pocket. All right, now where's that money? I don't know. You knew it was in this room? Yes, I knew that. You'd been up here earlier tonight. No, I couldn't get up. But you knew who took it. Who? All right, Doctor. This time, I'll do the locking up. Quick! A man just came through the skylight went down the stairway. Where? Down the stairs. Help him, Doctor. Oh, oh. What did you see? I didn't see anything. I had to get that dreaded detective out of the way before he wasted any more time. By the time he gets back, I may have a little surprise party for him. But then you don't think the doctor's going to this? Of course not. He's just guilty enough to look more guilty than he is. But the man who was locked in there with you, Dale, 
is the man who killed Dick Fleming and took that money. Now, one thing is clear. When we first came in here tonight, we frightened him away. But there's a question. Why did he come back? All in all, I think there's only one answer to that question. You think the money's still here? I do. You search that side of the room. Body's still warm. Billy's ghost. Oh, quick, his wristwatch. Does it have a luminous dial? Yes. Ah, that's Lizzie's moving eye. Then he couldn't have died in Colorado. Of course not. He and the doctor had a nice little plan. He robbed his own bank. The doctor courteously wrote out a death certificate and brought back an empty coffin while Fleming hit up here. He meant to split the proceeds, but unfortunately, Dick Fleming wasn't cut in on it, and he foolishly rented the house to me. We got in their way. And did he kill Dick? Well, who killed him? The doctor? The doctor doesn't even know he's dead. Why do you suppose he put this candle out a few minutes ago? He thought Courtney Fleming was behind the mantle with Dale, and he wanted to give him a chance to get away. But he wasn't there. He was dying. But the man who killed him and killed Dick Fleming was the man who was in there with Dale. Who? The bat. Go, oh, oh, detective! Not yet. Close the door. No one can help Courtly Fleming now, and I'm not through yet. Oh, I am. I am through. I'm going to get my coat together, and I'm going to pack my suitcase, and I am going to... Andy! Who bad is that? Fine. The money. It is. Jack! Jack, everything will be all right now. Fire! The garage. The garage is burning. Not a sound out of you. Close that bag and put it back where you found it. Why, you? Jack! Do what he tells you. He's the bat. Blow out that candle. I'm going to scream. I can't help it. Put that woman in the mantle room and shut it. I'll go. I'll go. I'll be glad to go. Not a sound if you value your lives. In a moment or two, a man will come into this room, probably through that window. A man who started the fire to draw you out of this house. Can't you at least let the women go? Are you crazy? I want to keep them here where we can watch them. Don't you understand? I have understood very clearly for the past hour. The man who killed Dick Fleming and that poor wretch in there, the man who locked us in downstairs and stole the money, the man who started that fire is... Sometimes the cleverest bat flies through the wrong window. Theft, arson, murder. That's a good night's work, even for you. Mr. Anderson! No, this is Mr. Anderson. That's right. This man has been impersonating me. He jumped me in the driveway, knocked me out and tied me up in the garage. You're a good actor, Mr. Bat. How did you know I was coming? Did you tap the wires at headquarters? I'll tell you that. All right. All right, all of you, get your hands up. You, do what I say. Why, 
I took the bullets out of that revolver two hours ago. Back! I'll put a hole in your back if you move. You never can tell what a woman will do. As it happens, I didn't. The first lie in an otherwise stainless life. Hour of Great Mysteries. 